The PixInsight community has developed various tools to help us inspect the datasets we're going to pre-process. We're going to look at two of those tools now, Blink and Subframe Selector. Subframe Selector analyzes a set of images and measures various parameters. When we open it, three windows appear. The first is the main window where we select the images. The second window shows us the measurements, and the third is where we set the approval and waiting conditions. We're going to add a set of 24 images of M31 in H-alpha. First, we select the basic camera parameters. The scale is 2 arcseconds per pixel and the gain is 0.33 electrons. Then we use a preview to select the region of interest because we're only going to measure the center of the image. Now we execute the process. Once the measurements are ready, we can see them in a table in the window on the right. This table shows the values of all the parameters in each image. The graphs are here at the bottom, and we can select the parameter we want to see in the graphs from this drop-down. In this set, we can see that passing clouds have decreased the signal-to-noise ratio in some of the images. Also, as the auto-guiding has failed, the stars look elongated or larger. While we see a drop in the signal-to-noise ratio in this graph, we see the opposite in the median graph. This is because passing clouds block the light from celestial objects, but increase the sky background brightness. Once we have all the measurements, we can set minimum requirements that the images must meet for approval, and we can assign them a weighting, which will be defined by this keyword in the image header. This weighting will be used later when integrating the master light. For example, we can choose to approve images with a PSF signal greater than 5. We click on Execute, and we can see that we've now rejected the images with PSF signal of less than 5. We can also use this parameter for the weighting. Now that we've defined which images we're going to reject, we're going to select an output directory. We'll call it Approved and we'll copy the approved images over to that directory with a postfix A for approval. To copy the images, we need to select the output subframes routine. Once we've finished with subframe selector, we can open Blink. We can use Blink to do another visual inspection. The advantage of Blink is that it shows us all the images in the same image window, making it easier to inspect them. We can switch between images using the arrow keys. Here we can see that the sky background brightness is different in each image. The differences are quite subtle here, but in some sequences there will be more variation. For example, if the moon is in the sky in some of the images, the brightness will be higher. But when the moon sets, the sky background brightness will decrease significantly. It's always a good idea to enable the automatic histogram function with this button. If we do this, the tool will apply an individualized histogram adjustment to each subframe, giving a more uniform result. There are some unwanted effects that aren't easy to detect in a numerical analysis, but that we can detect in a visual inspection. One example of this is when high clouds create halos around the stars. We can see this in this image. In this dataset, we're going to detect the weak nebulas in the background. We therefore want to reject the images with halos around the bright stars because they contaminate the sky background. So we know that we don't want to select this image for our set. We can move it to a directory. 
We'll create a new directory here called Bad Frames. Now we can be sure that the images in this approved directory are the good ones that we want to pre-process and integrate in the master light. Thank you.